Hi, welcome to another edition of Business Bites here from Bauer Media in Northern Ireland. My name is David Tai, the Managing Director of Bauer Media, and each week we take a look into the world of business here in Northern Ireland. And this week, I'm really pleased to welcome our guest. It's Gordon Lyons, who is the Minister for the Economy here in Northern Ireland. Gordon, welcome to Business Bites. Hi, David. Thank you. Good to be with you. Well, it's great to see you. Um, we're very pleased that you can spare some time to join us in what must be a busy schedule. So we'll crack straight into our conversation, if you don't mind. So obviously, a massive uh, deal for you and for the whole of the economy right now is the High Street Voucher Scheme. So can you bring us up to date with how that's going? Yeah, well, the uh, High Street Stimulus Scheme is one part of my Economic Recovery Action Plan. Uh, my predecessor, Diane Dodds, uh, secured £293 million from the Northern Ireland Executive so that that plan could be uh, rolled out over the rest of this financial year. Uh, the key component of that, of course, is the uh, High Street Scheme, uh, a £145 million scheme design to uh, help us get back uh, to where we were before um, the pandemic hit, supporting those businesses that were uh, most affected because they had to uh, close down during the lockdown. Uh, so every adult in Northern Ireland will be entitled to a £100 uh, voucher, uh, a, a prepaid card rather that they will be able to uh, take in uh, to uh, bricks and mortar businesses in Northern Ireland. So we're doing that for a number of reasons. First of all, to give that immediate shot in the arm to those businesses that suffered the most, uh, but also hoping that people will spend more than that at £100, but also as well, um, hopefully encourage people to go back to those businesses again uh, beyond this period uh, and really try and seek to, to reorientate people um, back onto the high street away from, from online shopping and, and, and getting their goods and services um, online. So the update really is that it has um, had an incredible response uh, the uh, portal uh, has been open and um, we have had a fantastic uh, response over uh, 1.1 million applications and um, we've been able to verify over uh, 1 million of those. And in the last few days that the first um, prepaid cards have been landing um, and going through the, the letterboxes uh, of people right across Northern Ireland. So. Uh, a really good uh, scheme rather than us giving money directly to businesses we put it in the hands of consumers and then they hopefully spend more uh, than that hundred pounds but but as well um, uh, reorientate people back um, into the high street and, and change consumer uh, spend so really pleased with with how it's been going so far well it sounds like some phenomenal uh, numbers there for for the scheme and how have how do you think what, what are retailers saying to you about the um the pick up and, and uh, what, where, where some of this money is being spent. Are you getting any feedback from them? Well, if we th thought that the uh, general public were pleased with the thought of getting a £100 uh, prepaid card, businesses have been uh, even more enthused and excited uh, by it. And I think you can see that in the um, ways in which they're trying to incentivize uh, spend um, of the card in their stores by giving extra discounts um, or whatever else that they can do to incentivize spend. So um, that has been a really, really popular scheme. Uh, like I say, far better than just giving the um, uh, money directly to the businesses uh, themselves. Uh, so I think that the, the popularity of it is, is beyond even uh, what we had expected. Uh, the first um, cards have now been activated and spend has started over the last number of days. Um, we will be able to track that spend in real time. So we'll be able to see uh, the types of shops that it's being spent in, um, the value of the goods that are being um, purchased as well. Um, so we'll be able to look at that data in, in real time and then be able to uh, respond to that as well and, and ensure that it is being spent uh, where, it's meant to, um, where it's meant to be spent. That sounds good. I suppose it'd be cheeky to ask if we're gonna get one of these uh, every year or <laughs> it'd be handy. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's many um, consumers and businesses in, in Northern Ireland that would like me to uh, commit to that. Uh, unfortunately, this is um, COVID money that has been made available for us uh, this year. And uh, we certainly hope that people will make the, the most of it and hope that we won't need it uh, next year uh, because the spend has already been um, 
uh, re reorientated back uh, onto the high street. One final question. Uh, the phone line for uh, applications for the high street vouchers, I understand that's opening on Monday. Is that right? That's right. That's uh, opened on Monday. And I think that most people um, uh, will be applying online. Most people have applied online or are getting friends or family uh, to do that uh, for them. But the um, telephone service is open uh, from uh, Monday. And that's an alternative way for people to, to be able to apply uh, for their card and then hopefully spend it local. Yeah, 100 um, percent. Let's then just perhaps, if we can, just talk, a, talk about an associated um, industry, the hospitality sector. So obviously yeah. we had the announcement uh, yesterday of restrictions uh, being eased in that area. And I'm sure people from hospitality have told us on this show that uh, they couldn't wait for that moment. That moment has arrived. What do you think is going to happen next? What kind of impact is that going to have? Is it going to be a huge rush or do you think it's going to be evenly spread into that area? Look, first of all, I do want to just uh, place on, on, on the record my thanks to the hospitality uh, industry for all of the sacrifices that they have had to make uh, since the beginning of, of COVID. They were among the first that uh, were impacted and also then one of the last to, to see full uh, reopening. Um, I've been a strong proponent of that. Um, I believe um, that if, if, if furlough is not in place and if there are not financial support schemes in place, it's unfair of us to place restrictions on businesses. So I'm glad um, that we have been able to make uh, this progress. Um, I think uh, actually businesses need to be commended as well for the ways in which they have um, spent a lot of money to try and make their uh, businesses uh, as COVID secure as, as possible. And uh, I think that we have um, begun uh, to reopen um, hospitality again in, in a way that is adhering um, to the, the mitigations as, as much as is, is possible. Um, so I think that you will um, start to see people uh, come back again uh, into, uh, into hospitality. And uh, we have provided a lot of support for the hospitality industry over the last 18 months. I hope that through the high street stimulus scheme, we can also encourage people uh, back into uh, hotels and restaurants and bars uh, again. Um, but I want to make sure um, that we make it as easy as possible for people to go about their businesses. And um, I think that with the progress that we have made in the executive, in um, uh, recent weeks and indeed this week uh, will we'll go a long way uh, to supporting that economic recovery. And I suppose it brings towards a close uh, those restrictions that have been imposed on many businesses over the last 18 months. You know, the, the, we're coming to what seems like to be the end of those restrictions now, or certainly the end phase. Um, what insight have you got in terms of the Northern Ireland economy about, about where we are now and what are the predictions for the future now that we're moving into what seems like a slightly different phase or a return to normality? Yeah, look, I think we have um, very firmly left that first initial phase um, where we were in a period of lockdown and we needed uh, a huge amount of financial support for our businesses. Uh, like I say, we've left that behind. We're very much in recovery phase. And my economic recovery action plan is a key uh, part of that, of, of getting us um, uh, not just back to where we were um, before the pandemic, but, but beyond that as well, so that we can um, uh, put in place what we need to have a strong uh, economic uh, recovery. And um, my economic recovery action plan uh, will help in that um, through supporting air connectivity, uh, through supporting those that want to export, uh, through uh, helping uh, people and um, the skills of uh, their uh, workforce. Uh, and so we're moving uh, in the right direction in terms of, of recovery. Uh, but beyond the rescue phase, beyond the recovery phase, uh, we also need to, to look into the future. And that's why um, my 10x vision uh, for Northern Ireland uh, is so important and really comes in uh, to play. Uh, we're looking to um, focus on our strengths, uh, make the most of, of our people and our talent um, so that we can really make uh, a, a, an impact and that we can make our, our economy um, much more healthy uh, than it is now and, and make it more resilient and make sure that we have an economy that provides opportunity for everybody. Uh, so as well as that general economic vision that we have, um, we're also backing that up with specific policies, whether it's our energy strategy uh, or our plan for skills, 
um, and our plan for trade and investment. We're making sure that we don't just get back to where we were before the pandemic, but that we really look into the future and see what is it that we need to make sure that our people have the skills for the jobs that are going to be available so that we can have that healthy and resilient economy that everybody can, can play a part in. And that's, uh, you know, that's a fantastic vision um, as we look into 2022 and hopefully put uh, 2020 and 2021 slightly behind us in the rearview mirror. Obviously, you know, just as we're moving into the what looks like the sort of sunny uplands again, uh, we've got other things that are out there on the horizon, like perhaps uh, energy prices that seem to be going up. And we've still got this uh, question of the protocol, which is still out there as well. Do you see any of those issues getting in the way next year or, or are we going to have a, a straight ride, if you like, into 2022? What's your view there? Well, look, there's no doubt that we're facing difficulties. Um, as you've mentioned, energy is a huge um, area of concern for me, both for businesses and consumers. I don't think anybody can look at the current uh, market right now and um, not be concerned about the cost of electricity and the impact that it's going to have um, over the course of, of this winter. It is a concern. That's why in my energy strategy, I'm going to make sure um, that we um, seek to build um, uh, an, an energy um, supply uh, that, is, that is affordable and that is resilient um, and that, is, um, that, that ensures that we have security of supply. The protocol, of course, is another issue of huge concern for us here in um, Northern Ireland. I've spoken to so many businesses over the course of my time uh, in office um, that, are, that are struggling as a result of the additional checks that have been put in place and the additional paperwork that needs to be done um, for bringing goods from Great Britain into Northern Ireland that previously never went into the European Union single market, was ne were never at risk of going into the EU single market, but um, that are necessitating um, extra work, extra paperwork, and in some cases, extra staff um, so there's no doubt that the protocol is, is a burden um, on so many businesses here in Northern Ireland, which is why we need to fix it. We need to sort that out. Um, now, that being said, I think if we look at the number of jobs that we have been able to create over um, recent months, um, over 4,000 jobs since the beginning of January 2020, despite a pandemic, uh, investors are still coming here and they're still creating jobs um, because of the skills, because of the talent of our people, and what we have to offer, especially uh, in services. So there's reason for us, I think, to be hopeful. And we want to sort out those other issues in, in terms of the protocol and energy prices. Uh, but fundamentally, I think we're, we're still in a very strong position. That's great. Um, Gordon, I just want to ask you one final question. I know I'm very conscious of your time, if you be so kind. So the final question just revolves around uh, returning to work and the workplace. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, it seems like a lot of people are returning to the office, whether that be in a hybrid model or, or part-time uh, and part-time working from home. The executive narrative still talks about working from home uh, if you can. It seems like other, uh, other nations may have changed that advice to go into the office um, as a sort of a primary response. Do you see that changing anytime soon or is it gonna remain that way for the foreseeable? Yeah, well, like this is a, an issue I've raised frequently um, with executive colleagues and, and the need for us to um, uh, make sure um, that we're helping businesses and that we're not putting a, a restriction on businesses. Many of them have contacted me and talked about the problems uh, that come from um, what is currently guidance that is in place, that we should work from home uh, where we can. And many people don't want to be seen to be uh, breaching that. Uh, I'm pleased at the executive. Um, that issue has now been looked at and we will be moving towards um, encouraging a hybrid model of working from home, which is um, what most businesses actually uh, want to do. Um, they want to be able to operate a hybrid model. I don't think um, many people that I've been speaking to are saying that they're wanting to bring 100% of their employees back 100% of the time. And so executive guidance will be changing to uh, reflect that. I'm pleased that decision uh, has been uh, taken, but obviously companies um, should be able to make their own decisions that they have um, been making their uh, own decisions uh, as well on that. And I want to make sure uh, that the guidance um, uh, re reflects the necessity for many people to get back uh, into the workplace. 
Well, Minister for the Economy, Gordon Lyons, it's been uh, great having you as our guest this week. Appreciate your time. Best of luck with the High Street Voucher Scheme. Um, I'm off now to get mine. I haven't done mine yet. I'm waiting for the old school telephone line to open. Uh, but uh, we, we hope that we'll have you on again, uh, perhaps uh, around Christmas time or into the new year, just to, to sort of look back at, at how it all went for you and for the economy. So thanks for being our guest this week. Thank you very much.